Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Australian Nine Ball 2011 um, titles. The player at the table right now is Vinny Calabrese, and his opponent tonight is um, Nathan Neems. And I'm joined in the commentary box by the famous Richard Evans. Richard, how you going, my man? I'm good, thank you, Barry. And yourself? I am absolutely awesome, and I'm stoked to be commentating on this, what's going to be a, an awesome looking match. Yes, it is. This tournament has provided uh, probably the more talent than we've had in the, uh, in the Australian titles for a very long time. Um, notable exceptions, Stuart Lawyer and Sean Budd, but uh, pretty much everybody else who, else who has been playing in the last 10 or 15 years, plus uh, five or six brand new up-and-comers are here today. Yeah, we had 72 runners in this uh, event, which is uh, a lot. 72 really good players showed up for this event. That's correct, and uh, uh, the, the uh, rounds did take quite a bit of time yesterday. However, uh, now they've come down to the final two games and, uh, uh, well, semi-finals, and, uh, and we see Vinny, as usual, just uh, attacking the table. Wow. I, th I think within 30 seconds he just ran the first rack and it looked absolutely effortless. As usual, Vinny, an effortless display, um, never one to be modest about his own ability, but um, always having that ability anyway. Yeah, he's absolutely uh, an awesome guy to hang out with, but also a really good guy to watch at the table. He's, um, he's about 23 years of age, I believe. I think Vinny is 23, yes. And his opponent, Nathan Neems, is uh, 17 years yeah, of age. Yeah, young 17-year-old, up and coming. Wow. Uh, was watching Nathan yesterday and he is put in flawless display against uh, a number of um, overly qualified players and he really, really did um, make them look a little bit silly at times. Well, he's just so good, he's so fluent, but these players are extremely, extremely fluent, very rhythmical players and uh, very talented. I mean, they make it look too easy, except for a shot like that. Yeah, Vinny sometimes uh, relaxing a little bit when he thinks he's ahead uh, in the stakes, but um, uh, notably always uh, covering these tracks uh, when he does get the opportunity to come back. And now we have our first chance to see Nathan Neems. And uh, he's going to play a good shot from the one for three here. You can see in the background there's a lot of people standing around watching. Um, yeah, we're here at the Empire Pearl Lounge. Um, in South Australia, and uh, it's been an excellent weekend. It has been. I've really enjoyed myself here. I love coming down to LA. Big thanks to Alec and others who always takes very good care of the players that travel from the state. And uh, it's a really great venue because you can play a good, good, good game of pool and have, have a few drinks afterwards and you're done as well. Yep, something that we're uh, sorely missing in New South Wales uh, the ability to get uh, alcohol when we're playing uh, nine ball. And of course, there's some nice eye candy in the room at, at all times. There is some nice eye candy in the room, and um, we're only 100 yards away from Hindley Street, where uh, there had plenty of eye candy last <laughs> night as well, mate. That's what I've heard. <laughs> well, so Nathan Neems opened up with a shot, and he uh, made an accidental ball. He flicked the ball in the corner. But uh, that's only one shot. He's still going to finish up the rack. And now he's in a very good position to take this um, second frame and, and tie it up in one piece. Is he a two shot player? I do believe he's got a two shot background, Barry. And he's probably a snooker player as well, judging by the system. Yes, he's a junior snooker, I think uh, a Victoria representative. Wow. Might be wrong, it might be uh, South Australian route, but uh, down this, this end of the, the country. That could just be um, missing that nine, but it could just be the fact you know, a big match, semi final. Yeah, playing the cow man. Playing the cow. Playing the cow man. Yeah. <laughs> and our other semi finalists are Ricky Watson playing Greg Jenkins. Uh, uh, Greg. Uh, has been, uh, just took care of uh, Ben Noonan on his way through and um, Ben's had a, a pretty staggered uh, draw. He's either been playing exceptionally or um, uh, been a little bit uh, not as, as as good a performance as we might have expected from him at stages, but um, still got through to this point, which is uh, admirable. What a shot. Wow. Wow. 
Testing, testing. Hello. My microphone doesn't seem to be browsing. Okay, so um, I was just talking to Richard Evans just now, and uh, Nathan is being 17 years of age. He's going to get he's just gonna get stronger, stronger, stronger every year. He is. He's going to. Um, uh, he's look. He's got a good grounding already, and uh, it's likely that he can only progress from here on. See how good his rest work is. He's going to go um, back to uh, two rails, bottom right, one, two rails. And both these young players are attacking. Uh, yeah, I remember when I was um, 17, I had no fear at all. But I didn't have as much time as these guys. <laughs> Vinny's won the last three big events that he's played in. And uh, this would make it four in a row for him. But I think the one guy he didn't want to have to play now was Nathan Neen. They both got similar stuff. I think Vinny's more comfortable playing the slower, more methodical play than what he is playing someone with a lot of rhythm. Like That's it, someone who attacks the table like he does. What a nice break he's got there. And for those of you who are wondering why Barry and I aren't putting as much commentary in during these games, it's because they're putting on such a quick performance of putting the balls into the pockets and getting rid of the game and uh, on to the next one. Yeah, we're not going to be getting much of a chance to call any shots because they're, they're just going to be getting down and shooting. They're both extremely, extremely aggressive players. They're thinking very quickly, and uh, by the time we can uh, tell you what they're about to uh, do on the table, they've uh, accomplished it and on to the next shot and aiming. Yeah. If anything, sometimes I feel with the, the younger players that they've got so much ability, so much talent. I feel sometimes that they do play a little too quick on some key shots. True, this is will uh, become apparent with some of the misses, as you saw Vinny miss that uh, One crucial ball, ball in the, that he missed uh, in the uh, second game, beginning of the second game. But um, uh, the, the age difference there, only four, five, five, six years age difference between them, um, and Vinny having uh, travelled to uh, England to play in the, the snooker. Um, is likely to hold him in good stead here, but uh, I think Nathan's coffin saw bridge him up there should be a, a, a real cracker at the end, and I'm hoping it's going to be uh, one or two games difference only. Oh, I'd love to see a double hill. Everyone loves to see a double hill match. Still like that life between when I watch him really play, it just makes it look so easy, so fluent, and his personality type as well. It just seems like nothing bothers him. Yeah, he, uh, I think he likes to say a bit buoyant and personality-wise to make sure that uh, it keeps himself up and doesn't let himself get, get distracted and upset. If he misses a shot within five seconds, he's forgotten all about it and thinks like I'm better than that one. Get a good one. Two apiece now. Vinny Calabrese to break. Gee, he has got a nice break as well, hasn't he? Um, his brother, Chris Calabrese, is... Is uh, also an absolutely awesome player. Yeah, Chris um, uh, finished top seed uh, during this tournament uh, at the end of the rounds with um, uh, no losses in his rounds and the highest uh, points for and against. Yeah, and there were nine players per group, so he won eight matches straight yesterday during the qualifiers, which is he was the only person out of 72 players to do that. And Vinny, and his, his, his brother Chris Calabrese has got the um, Oceania record for the most break and runs in a match. He's broken around seven in a row during the Australian time. Well, that's quite spectacular, Barry. But I know that Vinny Calabrese, when he was practicing uh, two nights ago, broke around seven as well. Well, the, uh, as, the, as they called them on the way in there, Team Supreme, Chris and Vinny both um, uh, thought that they might have been at the end of the, the doubles. Uh, the doubles eventually taken out earlier on uh, Yes, uh, on Friday by 
Dave Rothel and Greg Jenkins who put in a fine performance. Very good performance. They're going to be really good ambassadors for the game overseas for us. Yeah, Greg having represented on a, uh, a number of different occasions and um, Dave a, a fine performer in his own right. Here um, Vinny's made a little error here. I think he's fallen alongside the seven. Played a little cannon. It's worked out very nicely. Yeah, not one to uh, not be able to get back on his position with using a ball, uh, whether it be difficult or not. Score is now three racks, three racks to two in favour of Vinny. And Vinny's um, broken and made the ball again. And uh, knowing Vinny, this should be a... I don't see any problems when to run out here. Yeah, as long as he uh, gets back up this end for the uh, for the four. And, uh, well, he might have a clear patch through that we can't see here on the... Uh yeah, definitely up there. Look for our uh, view from here is a little bit... Uh, Closed, and we thought that other ball was in the way, but uh, and with this clearance, it'll be two racks in a row. I'm wondering um, if we could see him uh, run a few, string a few together. He may well do. We might not see Nathan get to the table again, but uh, I suppose that all depends upon Vinny getting the balls in. Um, well, this seven final is a race to eleven. I mean, it was two. A it's now three two. If he runs seven or eight and out, that'd be. Good. I don't know what I'd do. Give me a box of Kleenex to um, Vinny. <laughs> See if Vinny can make another ball and land on a low ball. Make a ball off the break and land on a low ball again. He's got a really good break. Oops. Where's that white going? He didn't make a ball this time. Oh, he did? Made a ball. He's made a ball. And, and he can uh, play a little cannon on the two. A cannon on the two and uh, might even be looking to double the one over here back into the side. And, um, plays the cannon. The one's not going to have a great deal uh, yeah, where's of options to, to be sunk. This is what I like about Vinny's game is that when he has got when he has got a difficult shot to play, he does take a few seconds out to to think about it. I mean, he's on. So just left in that gap. He's, uh, How do you get from the one to the three here? Well, Vinny might be looking at the moment just rolling the one down to the corner and looking at, I think he's looking at hitting the edge of the three onto the, and the white rolling onto the nine and then pushing the nine towards the pocket. Yeah, that'd be very adventurous. Uh, uncharacteristic miss there. It was from a difficult position, but... Um, Leaving, uh, still Andy leaving him, not much of a, of, a, of a choice here. Uh, good chance for the knife if he goes down the rail, but um, I think he's going to play the snooker. Now, depending on how close Nathan's put the white to the black, oh, he hasn't. Uh, I mean, he's got a chance to get the back of this and. Uh, Vinny Reyes does it again, kicks safe. I think uh, Nathan's got the opportunity to cut this and capable of doing it, but likely to um, actually hit the ball square and run the one up. Yeah, I like, the shot I like here is to kick it from the back end with the top top on the ball and, and uh, a bit of left, and then the white ball should stay there, and the one comes round yeah, and hides uh, behind the nine and the three. But is he cutting this? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, half ball. Cushion to cushion, uh, which unfortunately for him will give Vinny a chance again at a, a, a double into the corner and um, and bring the white back up this end, still giving him some balls in between the object and the white. Nice shot we might Vinny. have a repeat of the last attempt again. Half ball up to the side rail, white ball back again. Uh, he's gone a little bit further with it. I think he's going to leave this on. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, can't believe throwing the head back slightly there, knowing that he's... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Well, that sat for a second, but uh, eventually dropped. 
one good shot he got in, into position. And Again, uncharacteristic. Uh, sometimes, that, as you said previously, Barry, that time frame, just that extra half a second can make a difference when playing a shot, even with players of this calibre. Yeah, well, it wasn't exa it, it wasn't the easiest of shots. It definitely wasn't the hardest, but I mean, that, you know, he's human. It's nice to know he's human. I've seen Vinny just do absolutely amazing things on the table. And Nathan Neems as well. I think Nathan needs the opportunity to just to have. Uh, he's had one, uh, one, one set uh, before this that uh, was held up because um, uh, the player who's playing well. There we go. It, 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 it didn't let him get uh, a, a bit of a roll on, but uh, he's used to playing at a, a much faster pace. So I think this will suit his his style with Vinny, but. Um, Unfortunately, not to make mistakes like that. Now, so Vinny had made the same mistake, and uh, his ball uh, bubbled around the corner pocket you saw earlier, and then Nathan repeated the same mistake that Vinny had made, but um, Vinny's ball dropped, and, uh, and Nathan's didn't. <laughs> you just make it funny. I didn't int intend to make a funny barrier, I think it just came out that way. <laughs> the score is now five racks to two, the end of break. He set the white ball the other way this time, normally he screws the white ball back a little bit. He still left himself a very uh, easy shot on the one, but... Uh, but he's going to come screw back for this one. But the way the, the way the Vinny is looking right now, I don't know if there's anything that he can do. He's going to get in there and run a racks. But I mean, Vinny's just the the whole room has felt Vinny's presence this weekend. He's got a really good per, um, personality for the game as well. I've, yeah, often I, said, I, I've often said to Vinny, and I said it in front of him, Vinny's a little bit crazy, which makes him play extremely good pool. He's a very positive thinking person, uh, and I really do like that about him. He's constantly thinking about playing the positive shot, the right shot, and if he does make an error, he just laughs it off. And uh, he, he doesn't fake laugh it off, he just laughs it off like that's how he is. And see, which can be a, a great advantage to a player if you put yourself into a negative frame of mind, and uh, as we said earlier, it can... Uh, ruin your game for a couple of uh, shots or a couple of games or even a couple of sets. This is a chance that Nathan has needed. He must capitalise. I feel he's got to get out here. He's got to punish Vinny for making an error. The last rack, he didn't punish Vinny for making the error. He just gave it right back to him. But he's got to punish him here. And let Vinny know, hey man, be on your toes. If you make an error, I will put these balls away on you. I just made it funny then. Put these balls away on you, Richard. Oh, I'm laughing internally, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Five three very soon. Yeah, and I think it's his chance to get one back. And um, uh, and a big break from Nathan as well. Um, they need to make a ball. Dry, but uh, certainly they went everywhere. Nathan Neems and Vinnie Calabrese met each other yesterday in the round robin groups. And uh, uh, um, Nathan Neems won four racks to two. And I watched that match, and it was over in about three minutes. It was all run outs. The whole match was just run out, run out, run out, run out, run out. Who make it all run out? Yeah. Round Robins is different because you're not under the same amount of pressure what you're on the semi final. That's right. Now, Vinny getting the opportunity to uh, um, reassert himself over Nathan, but uh, we shall see the outcome of this match. Reassert himself, outcome. Yeah, the player's just settling down a little bit now and um, when uh, things aren't going as, as easily and uh, they realise that they're both capable of taking frames, I think we might see just a little bit more of a safety battle than we had previously, unless of course the balls are set for uh, nice and open. And uh, the moment that we've got, as you can see, we've got a lot of balls on the rail, so. Here we do. He 
interesting push there. So Vinny pushed there to play a, a bank. He went for the straight team. double. Nathan Dean is now just taking his time. He's give himself an angle. Oh, he's going to play the combination and then give himself an angle to break up the seven and three. He needs to give himself an angle on his two ball. Can't tell from that camera oh, he's got. Uh, Capital is going back off the other side. Wow. Let's see what the yeah, camera angle unfortunately doesn't uh, let us get as good a view as we may have. It's a good safety shot from Nathan. Good shot, mate. And that's a terrible kick shot from Vinny. Come on, Vinny. He just completely missed. That was not a difficult kick shot at all from Vinny. It's like Vinny just, if Vinny kicked that ball like it was nothing. Yeah, just, uh, well, when you, as you said, with that confidence level uh, and he plays those shots regularly, he's likely to um, just uh, snap out of it as quickly as possible. Excellent side off the rail there from Nathan. Put himself in position for the uh, six and a screw back down for the seven. You're right, the shot that he played before on the six was an awesome shot. But this one here. Oh, uh, I think he's still got the edge of this up in the corner. In the middle. But, uh, High corner. Middle. No, even, if, even for the middle. That's uh, a little closer than one I had expected. 5 4. Nice. And the cursory 9. 5 4, the score right now. Nathan Leaves losing the white ball on his break. And look where the two nine are sitting. He's yeah. saying, the two is scaling out, come on, mate, put me onto the nine. Well, we'll just see if Finney can get nice and straight on this. He's likely to um, uh, have a good think about it before he, uh, he goes it. And he'd obviously like to get in the best possible position to make that a, uh, a combination rather than uh, be a little bit off. I think he's put himself fairly clean there, Barry. Mm. It's a nine combo for a two nil lead. Making short work of it. Nice. And now, this time, Vinny's lost the white ball with the break. No, uh, Did he make a ball? No, dry break there, but uh, white ball down the bottom corner here, and um, Nathan got the opportunity. I'm not sure it'll go past the, the uh, seven, but uh, difficult to get onto the two after he does because he can't put a lot of bottom on it, otherwise he's going in the middle pocket. So you're saying he's going to try and cut the one in the middle? No, I don't think he's... Uh, uh, well... What goes on in the player's head is a difficult thing to say from the angle that we've, the camera angle be. that we've got. I think it's a bit difficult to do that. He's going to come up with a good safety shot here. Oh, he's banked the one. Oh, my God. Trickled in. Banked the oh. one and, and uh, landed on the two. But uh, I don't think the two will go past the three there. But he might uh, run it onto it. <laughs> and now the combo on the two, three. And all of a sudden, now. with two nice shots, he's it looks like he's in line. The, the bottom cushion and uh, and back up for the four down the corner, which is what he's looking at now. Yep. So actually, screw into it. So, well, a bit out of position, but still getting the uh, the pot on for the other side. And this race is a race to 11. It's 
it's already six racks to four, and it's only been about 20 minutes. It's a fairly quick frames, uh, Barry. They're averaging two minutes per rack. That's incredible. Oh, that's another mistake there. Yeah, another uncharacteristic the miss. Well, he put a lot of power into it. He wanted to get all the way back for the six. He, he missed pot and position. And now Vinny's only hit this one. He doesn't care. Just needing to make sure of his position uh, on the next ball from this one. He doesn't care. He's like, I'm Vinny. I'll put it from anywhere. Yeah. Just get me on it. <laughs> yeah, seven easy uh, shot now, but uh, right position for the black to come in. Should be halfway between the black and the nine. And he's under hit this one as well. Still all right though. Don't expect him to miss this shot. Take that balls. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Always seven racks to four, and uh, what a what a great match you're watching right here. And we can see in the background there Ricky Watson, who uh, has put on an excellent display this weekend as well, um, playing in the other game against Greg Jenkins. Uh, and the score, Ricky, they Ricky take the, care of a look lot at the of comparison. fine players on the way through yeah. to the finals. They, they both start at the same time. Both semi-finals start at the same time, and we're looking at a scoreline of seven four here. And the other table is the scoreline is three one. So they've played 11 racks on this table, and they've only played four on the other table. That's how fast these guys are going. But yeah, Ricky Watson, the first time I saw Ricky Watson play was um, last uh, two years ago when he played in the um, semi-final against uh, Condo in the same event. Yeah, Ricky, a fine player, uh, originally from uh, Great Britain, Scotland in particular, and a um, uh, fine junior uh, representative player for Scotland. Yeah, yeah Ricky Watson's a freak. He really is a freak. I mean, in a nice way, Ricky. Don't come after me. He and uh, he played with the current uh, Australian Timball champion, um, uh, Justin Campbell, this weekend. And um, they, uh, unfortunately, played very well as a team, but um, didn't get through as far as they could. And uh, I think um, uh, Ricky accounting for Justin yesterday in the Round Robins as well. They played very well in the Round Robins. Um, they were in my group. And uh, Ricky, Ricky Watson brought a lot of experience to the um, table when they were playing. Come on, Vinny. And he's going to keep his head up here. He's just giving the ball away, ball and hand away. Vinny missing the line. Vinny's thinking now in his mind, is it easier to run the balls or play this one-nine combo? Luke Hoff, take notes. It's better to run the balls than play a silly one-nine combo. That's it. We're not... Uh uh, big professors of the gay out here at uh, Keyball TV. Was that, did you just say gay out on, on film? I did say gay out on film. Uh, that's the way we call it here. We call it as we see it. Well, Luke calls them natural angles. We call them gay outs. <laughs> <laughs> see, now Luke's saying, Papaz, you see, if I put the one line combo, I would have won the rack there in one shot, not messed it up. The one nine combo was not easy to take on. That's correct. Now, the, the, the players, I think, uh, not that pace takes a toll with the young fellows like this, but um, they're not getting the best of position. Uh, sometimes uh, running fast at them can get you uh, the world. And as we've seen, we've gone very quickly. We were almost uh, as long as two games already just for this past game. I, I almost understood what you just said there. What did you say? Well, this game has taken almost as long as two of their normal games would take. So what you're saying is this game is taking shorter than other games? No, no. This take, the, the, the time frame here, by this stage, they normally would have run the balls out and be on to the next game. What do you mean? I'm messing with you, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I was about to say, you didn't have that many drinks last night, Barry. I you kept, you kept well, and you put in a fine performance today, too. How far did you get through today, Barry? I finished in 13th place. Well, I, I really thought you were going to get in the uh, 9th to 12th at least, mate. But yeah. um, that's unfortunate. There, as I said before, we have a, a spectacular array of talent here this weekend. And really, the level of players 
uh, minus those two exceptions I mentioned earlier on, has been much higher. I spoke to Greg Jenkins yesterday. He said he hasn't seen this good of a turnout for 15 years at the level that these players can play at. Yeah. Definitely a lot of... Lot of biggest field I've seen in a long time and a lot of young up and players. These are two of the stars we have here on, on camera right now. And, uh, yeah... Honestly, you see a 17-year-old who's half my age playing and a 23-year-old in the semi-final. You couldn't be so 34, Barry. I am 34, mate. I am. I would have picked you at 29. Oh, <laughs> you just want to get my pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, though, the young players, and a lot of talent, man. Like, I've seen so many young kids coming this weekend, and not just younger ones, but also you know, mid-25s, mid-20s, mid mid just good players. And Adelaide's full of good players. They've got, they've got so many ballrooms here where they play and they practice and they've got leagues happening and there's... Just, you know, it, it I think two shot is a very good grounding for beginning uh, yeah. to play these here because the guys get to um, uh, the opportunity to aim at a ping pong ball. It makes it a little bit easier to aim at this, but um, a lot of them don't realise the difficulty that these these are not as forgiving these tables. And uh, if you're a little bit off with uh, your bottom or side with the larger balls, it can really make a difference to the direction that not only the cue ball takes but the object ball as well. And um, well, I'm not going to knock it, man. I've never played two shot, but I can really see it's a very difficult game, and there's like different skills required. And I have a lot of respect for all two shot, any, right. any game, but anything with cue and balls, I have a lot of respect. That's for. correct, mate. It's, uh, there is a difference with the um, with the equipment, obviously, and a transition that's necessary with uh, aiming at not only the different size ball, but aiming with the different size. Let's just cue. say, Richard. Let's just say, Richard. Right, I, I'm a two shot player, and I want to come over and play some nine ball or eight ball. Who do I see to get a nice cue? Well, I would personally be going to Oz Billiards. Thank you for the opportunity to throw to an advertisement there, Barry. Um, <laughs> I get paid for Oz Billiards actually um, uh, providers of uh, some excellent equipment here in um, uh, South Australia as own and, as I said, current uh, Australian 10 ball champion um, Justin Campbell, uh, one of the Oz Billiards crew now. Justin Campbell's now, you, you recruited him. I, mate, I'm recruiting all the time here, Barry, and uh, uh, I, I believe that I will have uh, somebody, uh, I will have a Cypriot player very soon. Mike that is not available, does he play tennis? No, 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 we have another young man going over to uh, Shot, mate. Take, care, take care of uh, some, uh, some games in uh, there. Score is now nine racks to four. Uh, Vinny is... Um, both players have made a couple of errors, but it just seems like Vinny's the one that's been punishing Nathan whenever he misses a ball. And uh, whenever Vinny makes an error, Nathan hasn't really punished him. Let's see if Nathan can come up with a really good safety shot here, get a ball in hand, and run a rack and get back in this game. Because it's, so a, we'll it's a race to that. 11, it's, you know. Vinny wins two more, it's, it's over. Come on, Nathan. Yeah. Good safety very, shot. Very good position there. Great safety know. shot. You now Vinny's going to... One, two, what's he doing? One, two hours. Oh, what a response. What's he doing? Bit of magic is what he's doing. Oh my god. Bit of magic there. Kick two rails, stop the whiteboard dead. Look at your opponent, walk away, and not even look happy about it. Again, also awesome. mentioned before, take that ball. Hey, what do you mean by take that ball? Well, look, when he's got that, uh, what can sometimes be misperceived as arrogance and it's overconfidence and that confidence can, well, I'm not going to allow the table to get the better of me. I shall get the better of the table and do the right thing. I want a jump shot. White ball wanted to come off the table but didn't and then he said take that ball. Vinny's got a top shot here. need much uh, opportunity to uh, come up on this one so he got the three into the corner again <laughs> make short work of these racks just he? lining a little short there and uh, won't stop him from having a quick go at it and now he's in trouble yeah just kicking the ball I in front of the four there and could have played that three in the middle if he wanted to as well true but I, I thought he but wanted to come, he wanted to come well he wanted to come back and got the opportunity then to, to put it for the corner and uh, just didn't come off the rail with enough side to, to bring it out for the right angle. Leaving the path of the white ball for the next one. Uh, Another kick shot here. Oh, oh, I think he fouled there. I think, he, I think it was nice and clean, that. Yeah. No one's protesting, so... Come on, Nathan. He's going to hate me. He's going to come and bash me later on. Come on, Nathan. 
here. We'd like to see more, a bit more of a game. This is the, the point the scores are now. I um, uh, don't want to think that um, Nathan's talent isn't what got him where, to, where he is, and uh, it certainly is. Uh, it's not just uh, talent, though. He's had a couple of heels matches where he's shown a lot of temperament, persistent, persistence, and, um, and guts. He went double heel with Delahanty. No, sorry, that was Vinny. Vinny went double heel with Delahanty. And um, no, Neem's had some really good matches where he really... It's not just talent. Nathan has got more than just talent. He's got the temperament for the game as well. And you know what would be really awesome squash doubles team? Would be these two guys right here. They're, they're Similar rhythm. Yeah. Loads of talent. Big nine ball here when you're losing nine max to four. It may look easy. Five racks to nine in favour of Vinny Calabrese. Nathan needs to break. It's a good break here. He's made a ball. He's put the one ball in there, Barry, and uh, just yeah, he's got an angle on the two there past the nine. And let's uh, see, is he going to try and combo onto the black, or is he going to uh, try I and get a bit of safety? I really do think that comboing this kind of ball from the rail, so that's the thing cut. Even though the black's closed, I think it's crazy talk. I think crazy Good safety, too, but safety uh, shot right here. There's not Put many balls on. to land behind at the other end of the table. He's got the one in the centre and two of them on the rail. So mm -hmm. um, to bring the white ball up this end of the table and have the, and Vinny the opportunity to have a number of balls to snooker him after striking the two might be a difficult thing. Let's see what he, he does here. Not too sure what he's trying to do there. What are you trying to do with it? Or, uh, wait, wait, I don't know. The video now has got a nice chance to run another rack of balls. Just gonna Easy little two eight combo. Sit short for the two and run the three back along the rail. The four up this end and uh, five in the centre of the table, so. Normally when I'm commentating, I'm making like a lot of noise and I'm making, I'm talking a lot, but this, just visualize this ladies and gentlemen, I'm just sitting back here having myself a Jim Bean and Coke at the Australian, at the Empire, and I'm just admiring this match, I'm just sitting here watching it, I don't even want to talk much, I just want to watch the mini shoot ball. Oh God. Again, <laughs> uncharacteristic uh, miscue there from Mini, which will let Nathan back in the game, and may well let Nathan back into the game. Back in, very the, big back in the match now. Very well. Back in the match because that was to get him on the hill 10 5 at the break. No, and, Na and Nathan Neems is more than capable of breaking running 4 or 5 in a row. That's right. I think he's done a, uh, done a 4 or 5 packet this weekend already against a number of people. Against a number of people. So, I mean, that, that could be a very costly miscue right there. As you can see, taking not a lot of time there, know, knowing. Uh, He's confident in his own ability, and uh, I don't think lack of disrespect for um, Vinny, just uh, confidence in, as I said, his own ability. Raising your, no matter how talented you are, though, raising your, your cue like that when you're on the rail. Showing the young tough. ladies the abs there. I showed my, my, my one pack off earlier. Your one pack's a little lower down, though, I think, Barry, than there. <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, the Vinny pots his nine ball, which I'm sure he will. Yeah, put him on the hill and, it's um, yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty a, bit of, a bit of a stumper for anybody, let alone a young 17-year-old uh, in, in his first uh, semi for an Australian uh, nine ball Yeah, but that's right, though. It is his first time in, in, a semi, in, in the semi-final of Australian nine ball. I'm sure Princess uh, is saying that because he's um, he's close to Vinny, but uh, and I, I know he's. Uh, I'm not that close to Vinny. I'm close to you. No, not you, mate. Princess Hoff. Princess in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, Prince, Princess Hoff, mate. Not not Princess Mavros. <laughs> Damn it. Now what I'm saying is, he, look, there's a lot of young players out there, and but, but Vinny's not just young. Vinny's been around a long time. He might be 23 years of age. We've been playing competitive well, pool. I've, I've been for playing. Uh, Vinny's been showing up at uh, some of these times. We've been playing Vinny from the age of 13 when he's been uh, uh, had to come and um, 
the rest of us have uh, been in, enjoying a nice bevy, uh, bourbon or beer or whatever, and uh, Vinny's on the uh, the soda water, sitting there. And uh, who is the last guy that you know, Australian top level player who's won four tournaments in a row? Possibly five now. Well, no, you'd have to. You'd yeah, have to look it up. In the, in the no, books you'd have to put Bud Lawler and Jenkins and Rojic in the mix. Um, yeah. Those four uh, th- over the last ten years have provided that sort of. Uh, and I think at this level down in uh, in Melbourne, probably Ben Noon as well. <coughs> oh, ben Noon, Ben's the other guy that I was saying one of the most awesome players I've ever seen. In my just life. Uh, mentioning that too. Look, Keyball's own, TV's own Kempton Cress, uh, a, a stunning achievement today. Beat Ben Noon eight nil, which takes nothing away from Ben Noon and. Uh, Kipton was in fine form. Did and, not uh, miss a ball. And played uh, the game to the best of his ability and proved that uh, he can mix it with the big guys any time. Yeah, but that's, that's, an, that's an interesting comment right there. Like, why is, why is everyone so shocked? Well, look, uh, unfortunately, I think that um, the, the hard work that Kipton puts in for Cube Ball TV and the fact that he has to set up uh, the, this commentary that you see now and, uh, and spend time doing that, takes away from the opportunity he does to keep his mind on the game and uh, but uh, it's a game that he loves and he's going to con- continue to do the right thing by uh, the players by providing them with the footage um, kept it along with his cousin Dan Lynch from uh, Melbourne who in his own right is a fine player um, have done uh, very well in providing all this for uh, us so that you, can, you guys can see seriously man every time I make a comment to F with you a little bit you just believe me straight away <laughs> Well, we are here to commentate, though. We're not here to... Um, uh, well, this has been a very easy match for us to commentate. We haven't really discussed much of the match. Um, this is... The score is 10 laps to 5. It's going to take something extremely special for Nathan to get back here to win this game. And they both missed a 6 ball once each, so... He hasn't got a good chance to get another rack up. And just take it a yeah, bit of time. Count um, Vinny's misses now. That made about the fifth ball that he's missed. Uh, he two of them were in one game. But um, you're right. He has missed quite a few balls in this match. And that's the, that's the, that's the thing he's got to iron out if he wants to go to the world class. I think the, 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 the times that he hasn't been missing have um, uh, been the only times that have afforded Nathan time at the table. Uh, Nathan capitalising the first time and unfortunately getting that dry break after his first win. Mm. Takes that other one there, bringing the scores to 10-6. 10 racks to 6. Yeah, nice big break from Nathan there, sinking a ball and uh, leaving himself open on the 1. Bit of bottom left or top left and back onto the, one, the 2. Oh, uncharacteristic again. That, that word is going to be... Uh, uh, used a lot at the moment. These guys are more than capable of not missing those balls. And like I said, when you're playing around Robin, you can pretty much guarantee to top your group. They're both, they're both through. It's easy to run racks after racks, but when you're playing in the semi finals, there's a lot of pressure. And really looking to uh, not let Nathan back at the table again and make sure that he's the one going through. Nathan's still got another bite though, uh, going into another round. No, once you make the semi finals, you lose your life. But he's undefeated completely. Uh, Nathan had a loss earlier and he came back through the, the, the loser side. Ah. The only two players in, 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 on both semi final matches that are undefeated are Vinny and Ricky Watson. They haven't dropped the game all day. Whereas um, Greg Jenkins and um, Nathan Nims both dropped the match and came from the loser side. A lot to be said about a player that's, that's been stuck on the, on the winner's side. They've, got less, they've played less matches throughout the day and they're a lot fresher. They've got, you know, he can get tired. I mean, Greg Jenkins has been playing. He went on the loser side earlier, and he's played probably f- four matches more than his opponent, Ricky Watts. You know, you know if you're playing an hour and a half a match, it takes a lot out of you. Once again, I'd like to thank Alec Benialis uh, for um, hosting the event, and a big shout-out to those special people that make QL happen. Uh, Kimpton Press, Dan Lynch, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> And ourselves, Barry. You in the commentary box, who unfortunately we're going to miss sorely when you uh, travel overseas. And um, this may be your last opportunity to commentate for Cuball TV. We might have to uh, start sending tapes over to you just so we can get professional uh, advice and commentary from you, mate. We like to, we don't want to uh, lose you in any way, shape, or form. I know, and I do appreciate it. It's been my pleasure over the last couple of years to be commentating on different matches. 
we will miss the meal, that's for sure. I know you'll miss me the most. You teared up last night when you sang goodbye to me. I think I would have been, uh, well... Uh, Stop, my Paul. Stop, my Paul. Nathan, Stop. just uh, bring another one back here, making the gap through now. This is interesting. I hope they don't cut this part out. But this is interesting. Uh, he flipped the ball then and then run the rack, and now it's 10 racks to 7. So, only 3 racks in it. You know, well, that, uh, it's changed that all of a sudden. That was three when we were at five two. It was ten um, five, and now stre it's stretched out to, uh, to to as I said five or six at some stage, and now it's um, very quickly coming to three frames. The difference. Yeah, it was five racks. I mean, Vinny was up ten five, and now it's ten seven. In the, it's psychologically, it's different. Look, Nathan Eames has to play perfect now. He can't afford to make an error, but we'll see how it works out. Just dry breaking again there, but uh, yeah, his break is letting him down this match. His break is not letting him get anything going. Vinny's gonna play a nice safety shot here. Probably getting behind the two ball if he can. If he can, he says no, Barry. That's not the right shot, Barry. So the shot is to play this one. Okay. I don't think there's a needle thread available there for uh, for Nathan to get between the five and the four. But um, might come off. Oh, it seems he has got the thread. Just to cut it. It's going to go safe. Ish. Who knows what to do here? He's got a really good ball mind. He loves the game. You can tell from the way he speaks about it. He loves. He loves shots. He loves to. He'll watch two guys play who aren't of his calibre and he'll just enjoy watching them shoot balls. On, he'll talk about it, say, oh, you played a good shot there. He'll, he'll, he just enjoys it. He likes it. Yeah. So think at, at this point, Vinny, uh, knowing that Nathan's been uh, creeping slowly up the last two or three frames and because, pull his socks up here. because of mistakes that Vinny has made, uh, this will be the uh, true test of his character as to whether or not he allows uh, another mistake to creep into his game. Ooh, wiped his feet there. Wiped a couple of times. There might have been a bit of extra mud on the bottom of those shoes. The key shot in this rack will be going from the seven ball to the eight to get back on the nine. Testing. I have to rest. We do that stuff like testing all the time. We're just testing our microphones, by the way, guys. I'm not talking very loudly. I don't want to hear that. Oh, we don't want the... Uh the watchers of Cuba TV to miss out on the fabulous commentary that the Barry the Mule Matt Ross does provide because as I said with, with at the moment this is the last time this will happen for, until we uh sit food. <laughs> you can make me cry. Okay, this is the shot here. Eight to nine. Look, we'll miss you dearly, Barry, and uh pool in itself will be uh worse off for not having Barry Mavros uh, at the tournaments. Thanks, man. And has he got on the nine? He has? Oh yeah. Yeah, Vinny's straight up the end here, and you can see we'll, we'll watch Nathan's hand in. extend into the screen to, uh, to speak with him. Uh, uh, Over. Yeah. Wow. 11 racks to 7. Very, very enjoyable match to watch. A, a fine performance from Nathan at, at, the, at the tender age of 17 to come all the way through to this point of the tournament. He's going to be a powerhouse in the next couple of years, man. Certainly Thanks a lot, man. Richard, for this uh, commentating time with you. It was special. No problems, Barry. Um, I'll bring the oil, you bring the towels. <laughs> Thanks, guys.